hey, it's Andy. If you want to work more on your business rather than in it, it's crucial that you start creating some SOPs or standard operating procedures. They enable you to outsource to other people. They can go and increase the quality of work that's done because there's a set process and they can also help you to meet any legal or legislation requirements. But how do you create them? How do you track their development? How do you review them? Well, don't worry. I've created the SOP Hub to help with all of this based in Notion. And today, I'm gonna to take you on a tour. So let's get into it. So I'm currently here on the SOP Hub and this has got loads of functionality in it which I can't wait to show you. So the first thing is we take our SOPs on a bit of a journey as we go and think about them, we draft them, get them signed off if necessary and then put them into practice. So the first thing we've got on the dashboard is actually a summary of where each of our various SOPs are. So you can see that we've got eight SOPs that are in the ideas in the inbox. We've got a couple in the backlog where we've had some ideas, but they're not priority. So we'll go and put those on the back burner. We've got SOPs that are not started, so we need to create them, but we've not started drafting them. Then we've got SOPs in draft that need to be signed off, that are active, et cetera, et cetera. So this is a really neat way to see how many SOPs you've got in various stages uh, here on the dashboard. Quite often you may be in your business when you think, ah, that would make a brilliant SOP. So here we've got a quick action button, so I can just click new SOP. We could quickly type in new SOP to create whatever your idea is, and then you can click off and then that goes and appears in the inbox. Great, now if I scroll down, we've got the life cycle section. So this is where we can actually see what SOPs are being created at the moment. So we've got a table here, so we can see what departments, who owns the SOP, so who's responsible for actually creating it, who needs to go and sign it off, and then who are our users uh, in the end once it's complete, along with any versions. That's a table. We've also got a pipeline so we can go and track and drag through our SOPs as they go uh, through this process. We can see what is our uh, sign off. So what do we need to go and sign off? And all of these are filtered for you specifically. So if you're working with a team, they'll only see what is relevant for them. So here, what do I need to sign off? So I need to go and review and sign off this SOP. I can also see it in the pipeline. Um, review is where you've actually got an SOP already uh, in use. And then in a certain period in the future, it just needs a quick check over to see if anything's changed. So again, this is like your to-do list. So you can go and review um, these SOPs. And I can see that they were supposed to be reviewed at the end of January, beginning of Feb. So they're actually a little bit overdue. And then I can also see a pipeline, but this is for everybody. So you can see that this one is actually um, Feline is the owner, um, whereas I'm the owner for the other ones. So that's your life cycle. We can see here a list of all of the active SOPs. So we've got the ones just as a list. We can see them broken down by department. And this is for real estate investors. So this is broken down various departments, whether it's sourcing or funding, finance, etc. And we can see the active uh, SOPs also broken down by their owners. So who uh, owns each of these various SOPs? And then we can just see a list for everybody. So that's the active SOPs on the dashboard. So again, you can see it's already a really powerful way to stay on top of what's going on. So on the left-hand side, we've actually got various pages so we can be more specific about what we want to accomplish. So if we go to create first, this is where we're creating new SOPs. So you can see the one that I created earlier in the inbox has now appeared here. And this is where we need to make a decision. So do we want to just move it into the backlog? So keep the idea, but it's not a priority. Do we want to go and uh, say we need to create this, but we've not got time to start it now. So we could just drag it into not started. Or we could say, actually, we're going to crack on with this, start writing it straight away and put it into draft. Now, this is filtered um, just to show the inbox. So as you'll see, if I drag it and let's say we're going to go and start drafting it now, it will disappear. Um, but we can then come back to that to start working on it. So you can quickly process the inbox. Then underneath, we've got our to-do list. So these are ones that are currently being created. So you can see what's in the backlog, what's not started. Here's that one we just created in draft uh, and then any that are also archived. And then we can see an overview for everybody. So again, we can see Feline here is on the, in drafting this one. Uh, we can see that these guys, uh, these haven't actually got an owner yet. So if I click the edit button, we can quickly go and add an owner. So finding a builder, let's just say that's going to be Marge. So I can add Marge in. And then for the quarterly performance, let's say that's myself. So again, add owner and put my name in. And then let's say I've now completed writing this one. I just literally drag it into for sign off. And then whoever needs to sign that off, you can see here we've got a field, let's say that needs to be signed off by Marge. Uh, I can quickly put that in. And then when Marge looks at the sign off section of her Notion workspace, it'll appear in her list. So it's really, really convenient that you can take what you need and then you can pass to other people when they need to do what they need. So it really works well with collaboration, etc. 
Cool. And then to do here, you can see we've got what needs to be drafted. What have I got in my sign off list? And then I can see all. So that's for creating SOPs. Then we've got the active section. So this is for all of the SOPs where they've been signed off. They've been put live. Um, and we can see here just this is a list for me. So um, what are my active SOPs where I'm a user? And I can also see them here as a gallery. And then if I wanted to quickly go and remind myself, um, how do I go and prepare a property photography? I can just click into it and have a look. Now for all of the SOPs, there are also templates. So to go and put a bit of standard, um, a standard formatting for all of your SOPs, I also include in this all of these different sections. So what's the purpose of the SOP? What's the scope? So where does it fit into the wider organization? Who are the various roles and responsibilities? So who owns it? Who's the end user? Are there any abbreviations or definitions? You can include those. We've got the actual process. So what are the steps? And it could be uh, step by step. It could be a checklist. So you could go and create a checklist with some, some boxes like this. So do X, Y, Z. It could be some diagrams or images uh, either created in Word. It could be using something like Whimsical uh, or you could even go and add a video um, for people to follow along. So loads of different media can be put into the SOP. Are there any tools or materials? So maybe there's a certain amount of software, maybe there's a certain piece of equipment that's needed for this SOP, any further documentation. And then we've got the admin section. So you can go and say uh, who drafted it, what was the date, is there any info? So you've got a whole uh, audit trail for each of the SOPs to make sure that everything is captured in one place. And that's one of the benefits of using Notion is that everything is stored in one location rather than being spread across lots of different tools um, and being quite hard to track and manage. So that's the SOP template. We've also got underneath for all users, a similar thing again. So we've got cards for the SOPs broken down by user, broken down by department. So you can quickly find what you need. Then we've got manage. So a big part of SOPs is making sure that they are kept relevant because um, things are always changing. So if I go into the manage section here, we can see which uh, SOPs need to be reviewed within the next couple of weeks and then next, which also need to be reviewed in the next month. And this is calculated automatically. So if I go into an SOP here, we can see that this was last reviewed on November the 14th and this needs to be re reviewed every 90 days. So then Notion automatically is calculating the next review date of February the 12th. And it's also got here just for better formatting um, next review date the 12th. So let me show you if I go and change this to say 60 days, we can now see that the next review date has changed to January the 13th. And then if I put it back to 90 days, it's now February the 12th. So that's all done automatically. And then if I scroll down, we've actually got an overdue section. So if there are any SOPs where their review date is now in the past, you can quickly see that these are the overdue at the moment. So this one was the 28th of January and that one's the 1st of February for myself. So just for the user who's logged in. And then if there are other colleagues who also need to go and catch up with their SOP reviews, you can see them here under all. And that's where we've got Marge is listed for this one. And then Andy is listed for another one. So uh, that's a great way for accountability. And then lastly, underneath, we've got a calendar. So we can see just a calendar view of SOPs for just yourself. Uh, so that's uh, 1st of Feb and then the 12th. And then we can also go and see all of them again, which is for everybody within your organization. So just different views to make sure that their SOPs are constantly checked, reviewed and updated. So when we create SOPs, we need to make sure that they've got all of the relevant information. So that's what the admin section is used for. So here we can see that each of these SOPs, when they're being created, need to have certain information like who's the owner, who's signing it off, what department does it belong to, etc. If any of those pieces of information are missed, it then appears in this admin list. And it's a quick way to go and make sure that the quality of your SOP information um, is, is where it needs to be. So let's just take an example. So how to pay staff. So this is clearly missing a version. So let's say how to pay staff is uh, 1.0, but it's still in the list because it's missing sign off. So let's say that the actual sign off is done by Marge. So if I put Marge in, you'll then see that it's disappeared from the list. So all this uh, view does is make sure that each of these various fields are filled in and as soon as they're all filled in, they'll disappear from the list. We've also done the same with active and also the same with summary. So if I go into active, we can't have an SOP that's live, that's in use, but it's got no users. So here, if that's missing, it'll appear. So let's go and say that I'm going to be the user, click on it. There we go. And we also need to say how often does this need to be, um, when was it last reviewed and how frequently does it need to be reviewed? So it was last reviewed on the 21st of Feb. 
So let's just go and say that this needs to be reviewed every 60 days. Type in 60 and it's disappeared because now all the information is there um, that's needed. Then lastly, in order to use the summary, so on the SOP Hub uh, summary page here, um, to make sure that this works, we need to just link two databases together. So if you go into admin, under summary, we've got these links and it needs to be linked to the three various areas. If they're not, again, they'll appear in this list. So the first one, just click in here, it needs to be complete to do. And then as soon as I click in progress, it disappears because we've got the three links in. So just make sure that for each of these, we'll click again, click those two and it disappears. And that's just to make sure that the summary on the uh, on the SOP Hub dashboard uh, works as it's supposed to. We've got the databases here. You don't need to look at those uh, normally. Uh, each of these pages has an admin user guide. So if I click into this one, we've got various bits of uh, information so you know exactly how the whole thing works. And then if I go back to the home page, we've also got a user guide which includes all of the different statuses. So um, what are the departments, what are the statuses within the database, what are the database fields. So there's loads and loads of information in here. Uh, it's easy to follow along. It's really powerful and it will help you to go and get out of your day-to-day uh, -day business um, and start working on it instead. If you would like to grab this template, then what I'll do is I'll drop a link down into the pinned comment below. So let me know if you've got any questions in the comments. But other than that, I hope you found this useful and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. See ya.